Welcome to Wrong Time Watch. My name is Kevin, and this might be the best automatic field watch under $300. But uh, we'll discuss that here. Uh, first, I'd like to thank RZE for sending this over for us to check out. Uh, this is watch is a tour watch. This is actually a prototype, so uh, there may be some differences between this and the actual production models. They're available for pre-order right now. I'll leave a link in the description below to the website. Uh, for these watches, there are six different colorways. This one is the spruce green, and then the other colors are yellow, blue, gray, black, and white. They have a little bit more fancy names for them, but uh, those are the dial colors. So the price for this watch is $299 on the fabric strap, and then if you want to order the additional rubber straps, you can do that, and the price goes up to $329. Um, when I first unboxed this, I didn't really care for the fabric strap and I thought I would like it better on the rubber straps, but um, I actually like it more on the fabric strap. And the reason for that is, um, well, usually I'm a big fan of FKM rubber straps or rubber straps in general, but um, this is a very light watch. It's not a dive watch. It's titanium. So these straps, um, they feel too heavy for the watch. The weight of these straps is 31 grams. The weight of just the watch head itself is 44 grams. So the straps are basically two thirds the weight of the watch case alone. But you may like it on your wrist. Um, maybe it'll break in a little more, but it just didn't feel as good on my wrist as the fabric strap here. And the fabric strap, if you're interested uh, with the titanium hardware, weighs in at 12 grams. So all together with this setup here, fabric strap, titanium case, looking at 57 grams. So really nice and lightweight. But I will put the watch on these straps uh, in a little bit and I'll show you the watch on these straps as well. Okay, so we have sapphire crystal with AR coating on the underside. It is a titanium case and it does have the ultra hex coating and with that coating the hardness goes up to 1200 on the Vickers scale. A typical stainless steel I believe is 300 if I'm rem remembering correctly so this is uh, four or five six times harder than 316 now stainless steel. So that's one of the disadvantages of titanium is that it scratches more easily than stainless steel. Uh, grade 2 titanium that is, which I'm assuming this is grade 2. So the coating is a big benefit on this watch here. Um, you know, really, I don't really have anything negative to say about it. I haven't checked out the loom yet, so we'll see how the loom is towards the end of the video. But I think it's a great watch. One issue, I guess I can say an issue here. One issue is the fabric strap is a little bit tight to get in and out of here. Just not quite enough room between the spring bar and the case, I guess. Maybe the strap's a little bit thick. Maybe it's the width. I'm really not sure on that. But like I mentioned, this is a prototype, so perhaps they've addressed that for the production models. Actually, you know, I'll show you the case back since I have the strap off here. Uh, let's see if it's focusing. So sapphire crystal. A water resistant 100 meter. So, yes, it does have a Seiko movement. Uh, this is the SII Seiko Instruments Incorporated, maybe uh, NH38A. So, a true no date movement. You can see there titanium. And there's a reference number. And then the RZE logo. There we go, get the strap back through there. Uh, the loom is listed as Japan Super Loom. I'm not sure what the exact formula is there. It does have a screw down signed crown. If you can see the RZ logo there. The watch case is mostly brushed. 
It does have that coating on there too, so it looks a little bit different than a typical uh, titanium. I'm going to compare this in a, another video against my Boulder Venture, which is just plain titanium uncoated. So that'll be a good um, comparison there. But you can see it does have drilled lugs as well, which I really appreciate, especially on this style of watch. Oh yeah, let's unscrew the crown. Don't have to worry about being in the danger zone here. So first position, we're hand winding. Should be good for about 40 hours power reserve being based on the NH35. Next pop out, the second hand has stopped, so uh, no go state. Now we're in hacking and time setting position. Let's screw the crown back down. Actually, uh, in the unboxing, some folks uh, indicated they don't really like the handset. I, I kind of agree with that. I wish the handset was a little bit thicker. But, um, you know, I'm not going to um, not buy the watch because of the handset, but um, it would be nice if it was a little bit larger. But as far as the length of the hands, I think it's right on. Hour hand is uh, just about touching the hour indices, and then the minute hand's all the way out there at the minute track. And the second hand's even further out yet. Um, you can see it does have an R down here for RZE. So the dial is kind of sterile. Maybe look a little better if they had a logo in here and perhaps 100 meter water resistant. So I don't know, that's just personal preference, I guess. So, as I mentioned, this is a nylon strap. Uh, they call it a NATO strap, but it's not really a NATO strap. A NATO strap would have um, a second strap passing through here. So this is just for the floating keeper, all this open space here. I think I'd like it better without this piece of fabric on here, but it still wears comfortably enough. I'll show you it on my wrist here. I'll show it to you on my wrist here in a moment. So yes, the hardware on this is titanium as well, and it is coated. Uh, this needle strap was a little rough uh, right here, but not a big deal. It's just the way it was uh, cut ultrasonically there. And uh, yeah, the buckle is signed. And that looks to be a um, milled tang. Oops, sorry, not on camera. Looks to be a milled tang there. All right, let's talk about the dimensions. I'll zoom back out here a little bit. Uh, you know what, let's just keep it here. 45.1 lug to lug. 38 millimeter case diameter, so Perfect size, I think, for my wrist. 38 millimeter is just an awesome size. The thickness is not really that thick considering the movement. 11.6 millimeter with the case. That's the benefit of not having a display case back. You can get a thinner overall watch thickness here. With the strap here, I measured it at 13.1. Um, I think this would be great on a, um, a Velcro strap, a nylon Velcro strap, like what comes with the SWC Arc and the uh, Formex Field Watch. But anyway, 13.1 with that strap there. 20 millimeter lug to lug. And then a 6.5 millimeter crown. And again, the weight uh, in this configuration here with the nylon strap, 57 grams. So very nice and light. Let me get this on wrist. Actually, you know what? Let me zoom in on the dial here. I didn't do that earlier. I mean, really not much to see here. Everything's printed. No applied indices. Just a, a matte green dial. So uh, pretty plain, which, you know, aids, aids to legibility. So I think it uh, definitely looks like a field watch. Whoop. Went too far out there. Probably saw some junk on the background here. There's always something going on uh, on the table here. I can't remember where I had this. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, that's about right, right there. Pull the floating keeper back up. There we go. Still not quite sure how I feel about these type of straps. I mean, they, they do what they're supposed to do. They keep the watch secure. It's not going to fall off if one of the spring bar breaks, but I really don't care for how this looks out here. 
been comfortable enough on wrist. It's again really lightweight, so I don't even notice it's there half the time. So let me know which strap you like better. If you like this one or the rubber strap, we'll put it on here um, right now. And here it is on the rubber strap. I really like the feel of the rubber strap. I like how it looks too. It has this added ridge here. And then you have uh, some airflow on the back here. So I think it's a good looking strap. And then this should also be titanium with the uh, ultra hex coating. So let me put this on wrist and then I'll let you be the judge of which strap you like better for this watch. This strap is very comfortable as well. Let's see where the tang go. There we go. With my small wrist, I always have the end just flopping around out here. So there we go. I think it's a great strap, especially considering it's only another um, 30 bucks. I think it's a pretty good price for this. So it'll be worth getting it to try out, I think. Always put it on a different watch if you don't like it on this watch. But um, I think it's a good combination. I just prefer the fabric strap. It kind of looks more like a field watch to me. So let me know if you like this strap or the other one. And actually, I have another strap here um, that I'm going to put on it here real quick to show you. kind of forgot I had this strap. Um, I don't know the brand of it. Someone uh, just gave it to me, so really appreciate that. Um, yeah, so the rubber straps are quick release. The um, fabric strap does not have quick release pins, but I'm sure you can always buy some and uh, put them on that way if you want. I never know which way to put this thing on. Not if it really matters. Okay, then let's go this way. Uh, I'll pause it and just throw this on here real quick. Okay, here it is on the fabric strap. Just had to finagle with it. It wasn't too bad to put it on, but I didn't want to keep using up your time on the video here. So, um, yeah, I'm a big fan of these velcro nato straps i first experienced one on the swc arc and then the formex field this one's a little bit different than the others um, it's actually a 22 millimeter strap and then they have this 20 millimeter adapter here uh, so it's a little bit screwy in that regard but it still works and um, i really think this is the best strap option for this So let me know between these three straps which one you like the best. So kind of a mini strap show there. A uh, quick look at it with the SKX. For size comparison. And actually we'll use this to check out the loom as well. So I'll pause the video here and then take a look at the loom. Well. The loom is a little bit of a bummer, but um, again, this is a prototype watch, so perhaps the loom will be better on the full production model. Um, on the camera, it looks like the indices are loomed, but uh, looking at it with my eye, I really don't see... I mean, I see them a little bit, but not quite as bright as what's on camera here. So, uh, the handset... Um, going to give it to the SKX. Uh, if the hand's a little bit larger on the uh, RZE than on the Valor, then I think it'd be just as bright. But then the indices uh, don't really compare that well. So Loom's a little bit of a bummer, but uh, I think the rest of the watch is uh, for 300 bucks. I think it's a great price, especially considering it has a scratch uh, coating on there. So if you haven't subscribed yet, I'd greatly appreciate it if you can hit that subscribe button. And as always, Thank you for your time and thank you for watching.